Hey, everybody, Jim Ingersoll here, hanging out with my good friend, David Phelps, Dr. David Phelps, Dr. Freedom, as I've called him for a number of years. Um, David, if you don't know him already, is, uh, is a former dentist, recovered dentist, um, prolific, living life in total freedom kind of guy, and now a best-selling author. His last several books I've absolutely loved from What's Your Next to now, my favorite one, 240 pages of owning your freedom. David, you're really popping these books out fast. I don't know how your your writing uh, is improving so quickly. <laughs> well, I don't know. I hope it's improving. I think my, my brain, you know, keeps generating ideas. I don't know if I get them down on paper really well, but I, I do get some help. So it's not just not just me, but I do get help because, uh, well, look, we all we all have ideas, you know, as not, entrepreneurs. And I think that's a lot of who we're talking to today. Yeah. Ideation is not our problem. It's actually uh, implementation and getting something done. So you got to have help to do it. Yeah, it's a great point. And this time you went out and got like the best of the best, like Dan Kennedy. I've been reading his no BS books for like, since I first became an entrepreneur, like 15 years ago. And I've, I started studying marketing and I ran into this guy, Dan Kennedy, and he like blew my mind with his books. And now like you're writing books with him. Is that like go back into the power of association there? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Jim, you know, you and I both know because you know, you and I met 15 plus years ago. And well, we were we were involved in, I mean, the way we met was through the power of association. I mean, we were both entrepreneurs, as you said, we both came from uh, very academic backgrounds, uh, you know, you engineer, me dentistry. Uh, yet we had this affinity for uh, an asset class, a vehicle that we believed uh, through reading books and association uh, real estate that would would give us uh, the freedom we want, right? And, and there's a lot of people that believe what we believe. And so, yeah, the, you're working your way up to, you know, you start where you start, right? And you find the best of the best that you can find within your locale. Maybe it's a local real estate club or whatever, Facebook group, which you have. I mean, it's a great place to, to begin the process. But, you know, you have to be discerning. You start saying, well, who, you know, you ask yourself or you ask other people, well, who else should I know? Who else should I meet? And yeah, you have to work your way up. I, you know, I couldn't just call Dan Kennedy up on the phone 15 years ago after I read a book. And go, hey, Dad, let's, let's chat. No, no, it didn't work that way. Um, you know, he, he protects his time. He's about so personal sovereignty, which I respect as well. But yeah, you know, you, you decide, you set a goal, right? And whatever your goal is, it's that mountain peak. And sometimes that involves association with certain people, certain groups you want to get involved in. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a climb, it's a climb and you just work your way there. So yeah, it was, you know, part of the reason I wanted to get Dan in this book is yes, he's been a long time mentor of mine, starting out like you did with books that I read of his, uh, and then little by little entering his realm and his mastermind group, and then becoming a private client. And then a year ago, uh, in the middle of COVID, I just, I had this idea, uh, one of a thousand I have, and I only act on one or two of them at a time, right? Because <laughs> the rest of you put in a folder called, great idea, not now. <laughs> so, so <laughs> but, 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 you know, COVID was going on last year, right? I mean, we're in the middle of it. And, and that's where, you know, the lockdowns were happening. And people were just like, you know, I mean, people were going crazy. I mean, a lot of people in financial difficulties with employment and businesses and COVID shut down. And I thought, I, and I thought, and I thought about, you know, our country uh, and, and the freedoms that our country stands for. I thought, it just was on my heart. I got to do something that takes what I've learned and experienced. And I thought, man, if I could bring Dan Kennedy in on it, because that's what he's taught me all these years. He taught me about personal autonomy and sovereignty. And, and yes, I want it for our country. I want it for everybody. So I thought, what if I could take the experiences and then bring him in the conversation and write a book that was about principles, not strategies, not, not, even, not even tactics, you know, because tactics are a dime a dozen. You have to fit them into principles. So I could we create a book on principles of owning your freedom first, and then you can help express that freedom to other people that you care and want to help. And that's exactly what you do, Jim, you, with your story, take it all the way from where you started. And, and we've had fun with your story on my podcast. And you've told it many times <laughs> about, you know, elevating from where you share or Cheryl were, you know, some number of years ago with your first, uh, and then you just elevate from there. But now you're helping thousands and thousands of people with taking their story and their journey and fitting it into the principles of freedom. So that's it in a nutshell. I know, I know that's not what you asked me, but I thought no, I'd just no, take no, that's shot. good. That's good. I love <laughs> hearing like the backstory of, of entrepreneurs story, right? It's great. I love it. It's why there's a podcast I do like, it's called uh, how I built this by Guy Ross. And it's, it's like the backstory of entrepreneurs yeah. journeys and that's right. the power of story and it creates hope for so many people. I love it. So everybody should just go to the link down below and click on own your freedom. 
Um, I've got it on Audible and I've got my copy. You can see it on David's bookshelf behind him, <laughs> which I love. And it's it's really a great book. And boy, we jumped right into the power of associations. And it, it brings me back to the thought of um, your network equals your net worth. Because I use this a lot in my dealmaker events and I use it in my Facebook group. But the truth is, you're the very first person I ever heard use that phrase. It didn't originate with me. <laughs> well, and Jim, you know, it didn't originate with me. I mean, uh, no, no, I, I, I'm not going to claim it. I'm, I know someone said it somewhere and I and I grabbed it, you know, in my head. But, you know, if I could give it if I could give attribution, I would. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with taking ideas, thoughts and things like that. And, and we all get to make them our own, though. I mean, I mean, you still give attribution to people. If someone came up with a thought or principle, I always want to give them attribution. But then we have the right and the ability as entrepreneurs to take uh, take those different ideas and then we mish them and mash them and, and, and come up with something that becomes our own, you know, right? I mean, that's so I'm sorry, I kind of just stole that thread. But you're right. You're right. You're right. And just think about the one thing that I learned so much from Jim Rohn. I never got to meet him. I wish I would have. But you are the average of the five people you're you're spending the most time with. Yeah. I mean, that's the foundation, right? It, it, they didn't it, it, teach it, me yeah. that when I was getting my engineering degree. They didn't teach it when I got mm -hmm. my master's degree. They no. taught me to be a great employee. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And I that's traded it. those hours for dollars for so long and had no freedom well that's 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 society's aspiration for all of us is like you know go up the ladder of academia to whatever level right. you 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 want to you know get all the credentials and degrees and everything else and i'm, I'm not i'm not saying there's anything wrong mm. with that but that's that's not really why you should do that because yes it's fine to learn a skill and a trade i i think that's it's a way you got to start in life you got to find something you can do to to add value and trade some time for dollars right but really, it's what we found about real estate. And that's another chapter in the book. So I'll just jump there. Is, yeah. is it, you know, wealth is not what you do, which is what society says. Right. You know, if you want to be wealthy, then you just learn learn how to have to trade a, a higher dollar for your time. So I can, you know, you can be a cardiac surgeon or brain surgeon, a, a New York City attorney and charge a thousand or more dollars per hour and go, well, that's the epitome of wealth. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's just a treadmill. All that happens there is you just elevate your lifestyle and then you got to go faster on that treadmill. What I say uh, in the book is, is wealth is what you own. That's assets. Now that can be intellectual property. That's a, that's an asset. So if you have intellectual property, fine, you can license it. You can use it. Uh, you know, I don't make money off of writing books, but some people like James Michener and uh, John Grisham, you know, they make a lot of money writing books. So that that's, so that's stuff they own, but we like real estate or real businesses where we can, uh, it, it's not totally set it and forget it, but let's put it this way, uh, your houses, your apartment complexes, whatever else you've got, Jim, uh, those are producing income on a pro rata basis 24 seven. Now, yes, somebody's got to oversee it. Maybe you overlook the big picture and you got people managing it. So it's not always hundred percent passive, but right. But the assets you own either wholly or through partnerships, uh, joint ventures, uh, that sort of thing. That's what gives you uh, wealth, which gives you freedom, because now you've got your time not required to go to work every day. Now you can, and there's nothing wrong with that, but at least you don't have to. I love the way you, you put it in the book about orchestrating your cash flow and, and getting all those assets out there working for you so that you can live the life. And freedom comes in a different, a few different formats, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, pe people, yeah, people start with, 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 with financial freedom. I mean, that's where everybody starts. I want financial freedom. I want financial independence. I think there's a difference there. I think financial independence means you've reached a point in life, probably mostly trading time for dollars in your career path where independence means, you know, you're able to pay your way. You're not dependent on any third parties. Right. Um, I think financial freedom is where you don't have to go to work. We actually have the assets that provide for you. And if you didn't want to want to, or couldn't work another day in your life, trading time for dollars, you'd be good, but that's the first tier. And people set that as the, the marker for life. Um, I think that's sad because what do we, you know, I say people to people, what do you really want? Well, I want more money. I want to make a bigger ROI, a bigger yield return. No, you don't. I mean, they say you do. I say, no, you know, what you really want is time. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Because I, I can pile up all the money in the world, Jim, but I can sit there and look at it and go, well, that feels good. But how long is that going to feel good? What do I really want? I want time. I want discretionary time to do what I really like to do, spend the time with the people I want to spend them with. If I have another business or an avocation or a hobby or 
or just my family, you know, I, I, I want that time. Uh, so I'm not always having to be on the treadmill, which is kind of the way society sets it up. Well, be on the treadmill and work hard till you're in your 60s and then you quote retire. And that's foolish because the day people retire, and we've unfortunately seen this happen to people that were hard workers, but with there's not a next, a next in their life, a next challenge, a next problems for them to solve, people wither and die. And that's sad to me. It's, it's, see, it's a whole wrong construct. So you've got financial freedom, you've got time. Uh, next one I say is relationships. Uh, who are you putting up with in your life today? Oh, because you think you have to. Uh, you're, you're serving a certain client or a customer or a patient because, well, I just have to because I need to have, have customers in the door paying the bills for the business, or I have to put up with certain vendors, right? Uh, or in my niche, people have to say, well, I have to take all the insurance companies, you know, and, and the reimbursement stink and the paperwork sucks. And it's, well, do you really have to, or have you just set yourself up for that? So, so that's relationships. Uh, and then the next one would be your health, right? I mean, we both know, uh, we don't take our health for granted, do we, Jim? I mean, we know yeah. there's been, well, just this last year with COVID, people have been like, you know, people thought they were the rock of Gibraltar and COVID took them down for a, a few days or a week or more, sometimes weeks. And it's like, I really started starting to seriously value my health. Well, yeah, because you can have all the freedom in the world of the other freedoms and you can have the money and the wealth, but if you don't have your health, then what the heck was all that worth, right? I mean- not much and then you know the top of the pyramid is kind of like maslow's hierarchy which i you know again i i took his framework uh but it's you know it's self-actualization well what does that mean i think that's where you really figure out what your real purpose in life is where you where you provide meaning or impact to people right you could say it's part of your legacy lots of words for that but a lot of people um don't really get there in their mind until they get past their, their kind of retirement age and then it's like uh, you know, it's like, no, you could be living that now. The point is the pyramid of going from financial freedom to, to purpose, meaning, legacy, and impact, it's not a linear progression. I think what I tell people is you should be working on all those at the same time. Now, there may be more focus on the financial bar. I get it. But you've got to be plugging in the other freedoms as you go. Some, some aspect, you ought to put it on your, on, your, on your mirror in the bathroom or you ought to put it on your computer. And just if you like those or figure out your own freedoms, right? But look at those every day and go, Am I doing something in all, in this case, five categories, you know, every day, every week? Because if you're not, then you're putting these other ones off to that mystical someday. And someday doesn't come for most people. It that truly doesn't come. They wither their life away and wonder, looking backwards, what was it really all about? Wow, that was a lot there. I love it. <clears throat> there is a lot there, starting with freedom. And I think, you know, I love the way you start with the freedom number, because I think that is the foundation. Like as soon as you've got that covered, then then you can exponentially grow a lot more stuff um, because you don't really need that income for a daily basis. Yeah, um, I've seen it happen with me. Like for years, it took me a long time because I from where I started. But when you hit there, and then like you've got that covered, then you can really build on just creating those assets. And you focus on creating cash flow instead of trying to create like a large lump of money. Yeah. And then yeah. everything just grows. Everything, yeah, everything, everything expands. It really is freeing. And what I tell, tell young people that ask me today, and, and I wish more people would ask and take it seriously, but, but, and, and I sort of did this. I mean, I sort of did it by, not by accident, but I'm, I'm just a very conservative guy. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, you could say I'm frugal. You know, I mean, I, we live a great life, but I don't, I don't need stuff. But anyway, here's, here's the point. Instead of allowing your lifestyle to elevate or expand according to your in, increase in income, because we all want to start somewhere and we, we, we get better at our job. If we get raises or in our business, we, our business is growing and that's all good. That's all good. What happens is we go, well, then I deserve to upgrade my lifestyle, right? We, we need the bigger house, the better neighborhood, the first, the better vacation home, the better vacations, the private, pri None of that's wrong. None of that's wrong. There's nothing wrong to aspire to that. Here's the key, though, Jim, and you know this very, very, very well. Instead of using your increase in your trading time for dollars income, your active income, why not take that extra income and acquire, build, create assets, whatever kind you like. Real estate's a perfect one. Or maybe you're really good at building business or businesses. I'm fine with either one. Now, instead of elevating your lifestyle based on your work on the treadmill, you use the extra capital, cash flow, equity or cash flow from the assets you created and built and you're riding those along and you pull from those. Yep. Because those are like the golden goose. Until you sell them, 
they don't run out of juice, right? So you could you could be using those to pay for the, the, the car. I mean, they can go out and get loans if you want to get loans at low interest rates and pay for cars and better house. But why not put it on the assets? Now, that's going to keep you from elevating your lifestyle so fast that you never get to catch back up to that freedom number. Boy, if young people would figure this one out, I mean, they'd be, I mean, truly, they, young couples with young families could be free if they started this plan at age 20. I mean, they could be free in three or four years. I mean, and, and that doesn't mean that number stops there. I mean, I mean, the ability to expand their freedoms in all respects would go crazy, but that's not what society tells us. Yes, I agree. So if, if you're working with somebody who's young and they just got out of college, say they're going to be a dentist, they have a tremendous amount of student loan debt, yep. and then they can get caught in that cycle of, of debt for their business and debt for their lifestyle and, you know, private school and, you know, fancy cars, boats, whatever. You would say, like, cut that out, cut your burn rate out, and, and the faster you can get ahead of your freedom number and start to invest the excess instead of spending it, you yeah. can accelerate how quickly you get off that hamster wheel. Exactly, because because people just think that somehow magically when you get out of your of your academic, um, you know, elevation through the, the court, you know, the grades, the, the college, the MBAs, the dentistry, whatever it is, they think once you get out of there and start making money that somehow magically um, this, right. this quote investment retirement planning is going to happen. And, and it doesn't, there's nothing. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a failed model. So instead they would look at, um, you know, acquiring assets and letting those assets build. Now, yes, you brought up a good point, uh, debt. I, you know, we talk about good debt, bad debt, right, Jim? Right. And good debt would be, you know, investing in yourself. And I understand that 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 education today, certain levels of it is coming with a cost. Well, just make sure your your education is going to give you something to go get the, get the ball rolling. Um, I, you know, there's there's certain degrees that I think are ridiculous today. Uh, should leaving, we, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, I'll say there's some other ones I want to say here because I'll probably make some people mad. But um, <laughs> but you, but but yes, you you do need to have a schedule. For how you want to pay off certain debt, and I want—I don't want to get the weeds of that here. We could do a whole whole session on on which debt, but you know, there's certain debt you want to focus on as you're building the assets where you do want to focus on paying off some debt. Usually, Jim, to, to make it concise, it's the shorter term debt, not not always the higher interest rate, but it's the shorter term debt that when, if you can pay it off relatively quickly, it frees up more capital. Longer term fixed rate debt um, on a business loan. You know, yeah. if, you, if you didn't get too big a house, you know, I'm not opposed to that because it's low interest. It's long term fixed uh, ride because I think there's some benefits to having some debt in an inflationary environment. Again, another subject we could touch on another time. But uh, yeah, there's 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 a, a, a balance there where you don't just focus on just one or the other for sure. Yeah. And I and, you know, I, I like Dave Ramsey. Is, I mean, he's helped a lot of people like he calls them baby steps for a reason. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> just leave it at that. Like, yeah. Uh, for like the average people, um, well, right. Get yeah. those baby steps. Get yourself out of personal debt. But I, yeah, love, yeah, I no, that I, leveraged real estate. I'm good with right, that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Using using debt leverage on cash flowing tangible assets, hard assets, yeah. hard assets. That I think makes a lot of sense today, and I have no problem with people who know how to handle that and do it. I think you should because that's the fast track. To acquiring yeah. more of these assets at low nominal interest rates that you know five 10 15 years down the road right. you're gonna be shorting the dollar like crazy and again people don't understand that. i'm doing what i'm saying is you're gonna be paying back that debt in 10 or 15 years with dollars that are extremely devalued and yet the valuation of the assets and the cash on the assets will will continue to elevate with inflation the debt will not increase it's 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 a it's a right. crazy time. The rents so, are rents are way up. Yeah, you know, well, that's what I'm saying. The, the the values and the cash flows will continue to elevate, right. but your debt service stays static. See, that, that's that's it doesn't make sense because a lot of people say, oh, no, no, no. You know, my my grandparents always said, you know, and Dave Ramsey <laughs> says, no, no debt, no debt, no debt. I'm saying, okay, well, like I said, no consumption debt, right? Get out, get out of that debt. But boy, you better understand how to use debt because okay. it's a tool today. I think you've got to wrap your head around it. If people haven't, it, it's you just got to study a little bit more. If you're like a debt averse, I understand where you're coming from, but you better study it because if you don't, you're going to be trying to play catch up to this inflation thing, which, which you know, Jim, most people haven't seen that are our age or, or particularly younger and, you know, the 70s. I mean, right. big inflation. And 
the people are starting to see that and starting to go, well, what does this really mean? I mean, I go to the gas pump and I, you know, it's cost me over three bucks a gallon and groceries and everything and, 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 and utility costs and everything's going up in their, in their first, first time going, well, what does this really mean? Well, yeah, your daily consumption uh, costs, but it's extracting your wealth. What's really doing it, it's whatever you're saving, uh, unless it's intangible assets, it's extracting your wealth. It's a hidden tax that most people don't really understand how it works. It's compound interest in reverse. If you want to put it away, that yeah, people can yeah, really understand no. it. Yeah. All right. Last thing, retirement. In your book, I was surprised when I read about the financial planning that goes into professional practice owners on how much they need to save and then yeah. put into the stock market to get where they need to get. Those numbers are really big. They're crazy. And I They're was surprised. I didn't know that. And I remember like in corporate America, that's all I could do is, in, you know, save into my 401k. Yeah. I knew nothing else until I hit 40 and got out. So can we just kind of close with that? Like the difference between investing in hard assets versus trying to save your way yeah. to financial freedom is very difficult. Well, especially when we have inflation, right? Um, but saving your way, the you know, what I call the accumulation model, save it. And then, yeah, most people are going to put it in like a 401k or they'll put it in stocks, bonds and mutual funds. And that all looks great when we have a, a bull run market, an up market like we've had the last eight or nine. It looks great and you're feeling good. But the problem is we know the markets will correct. And if you don't have a plan that you're going to hedge those investments, and we know how to do that in real estate. Real estate, we it's very local. We can hedge. We can hedge the downside. We've been through the cycles. We know what it looks like. And it's not like we lose 50 percent you know, of our asset value in in a matter of weeks. Um, the, the cash flow keeps keep on keeps running. So the, the craziness is the reason why that a lot of financial planners tell higher income earners that you need six, eight, ten million dollars. Typically, that's what we're hearing, the eight to ten million dollars to live, you know, not a big lifestyle, but, you know, what they're kind of used to. It's because they never learned how to generate cash flow. They yep. never learned how to generate. It's because the financial model is typically not. I mean, yeah, there's some dividend stocks, but usually they're pretty low. It's all about, well, let's just put you in like gross stocks. And then, of course, when you retire, active, active income, what's the financial, the, the, the prudent financial planner tell their client? Well, we better get you out of stocks, right? We better get you into bonds, <laughs> key bills, and CDs because we, we can't play the roller coaster anymore. The roller coaster really good for 40 years. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> but now we better take you out of that because, well, you, you can't make up for lost time again like you've been doing for the last 40 years. You'll wear, you you oh. go up and then you go down, you go up and you go down. You know, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? You're going, yeah, was that, was that really fun? Now we got to put you in conservative investments that don't produce anything today. So retirees, fixed income people that have no clue as to how to uh, orchestrate their financial future, they're getting creamed and it's, it's, it's sad. It's sickening. And it's like I said, it's a different playbook today that most people that grew up decades earlier or learned from their mothers and fathers, how to be prudent and conservative in life. It, it doesn't work. It should work, Jim, but it doesn't anymore because we live in crazy times. All right. I'm going to leave it with that. Own your freedom guys and girls, everyone watching this, whether you're young or older, you've got to get a copy of this book. Um, click on the link down below and make sure you do that because your future and your legacy depend on it, guys. Do it. So it's a great book. I appreciate the fact that you're using your gift of writing to share this message. And I look forward to seeing you in person in Richmond at Dealmaker 2022 in March, of course. Yes. Excited. Uh, you've always been there for us. And Cheryl and I uh, greatly appreciate you and Candice. Um, Thanks for sharing this message on freedom. It's so important. Click on the link, grab the book, and connect with David uh, right now. Jim, it's always a pleasure. It's good to hang out with you. I know you've got another appointment right behind us. I'm going to respect your time and your freedom. But thanks for giving your gifts, your gift of writing to impact so many people. We all are grateful for you, not just because it's Thanksgiving next week, but because you are a giver and, and you live a generous life. Thank you very much. Jim, my pleasure always. Thank you. My best to you and yours for this Thanksgiving coming up. We'll talk again soon. Yeah.